Hello and welcome to The Village Voice. I am your host, Realtor Kathy Smith. And today I thought we'd talk about a little something different. Now with the whole COVID-19 coronavirus shelter in home, at place, whatever you wanna call it, orders have been in, in effect. Um, we've all had a little chance to do some things that we've always been meaning to do, whether that's perfecting your you know, backhand swing or if it was getting you know, that elusive below a 15 handicap in your golf game, some of us have turned to sports um, to uh, pass the time. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, some of my history actually goes back with sport. Um, I absolutely love sports. Um, I kind of did a little bit more aggressive sports, such as things like ice hockey, figure skating, Krav Maga, cycling, and I have been the world's slowest runner <laughs> over the years. Um, but, you know, some of these things that, you know, in these sports, you find that there's a certain level that you can get to. And then there seems to be this large wall that you can't get beyond. So I thought I would bring in somebody that actually knows that firsthand with an incredible sports pedigree. Chelsea Mills, from the, who is a mindset coach with the winning mindset. Actually, I bring Chelsea in here. Hello, Chelsea. So good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me on. I so appreciate it. Not a problem. And, you know, I was going to go into the whole pedigree that you've got, but goodness gracious, Chelsea, you're like two sports. You know, you're a, you were a division one tennis player. You're, you're rated over a five on the tennis rating program. I mean, goodness gracious. I'm, I'm I wish they had something below 1.5. because I think that's where I'm at. <laughs> I always loved the game of tennis, but for some reason it never loved me back. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, the, the thing is you've been, you know, with the, with the uh, USPTA, the Pro Tennis Association, you have been an elite pro for over 20 years. Is that right? No. Well, I would say I've been a USPTA elite professional for since I was about 24. So I would say 12 years. I've been actually teaching tennis since I was about 16. So I have been teaching for for that long, but not. Um, but yeah, I actually got the actual certification when I was about 26, 24. Sorry. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow. But you've also got, you know, besides that, you're also a, a professional water skier. Yes. And what's your current ranking right now? Um, so I am number eight in the world on the uh, elite women's side. So course I'm always trying to push the boundaries there and um, mm -hmm. get better but I that was definitely a goal that I um, you know I just kept having to raise the bar on I it was something that actually uh, came about by by an injury in tennis um, caused me to get into water skiing so my wrist was really hurting playing tennis but then skiing um, didn't hurt my wrist um, oddly enough. And so that was how I got into it. But um, yeah, I've been been able to accomplish a lot in the last 10 years, the 10 years that I've been in the sport. And um, it's been super fun. That's, a, it's incredible. I mean, I can't even think of mastering one, you know, uh, one sport, let alone having two of them with such high abilities. Um, well, I don't know about mastering, you know, um, I, I, I can't ever I would never be able to say that about myself. Mm -hmm. um, maybe somebody else could say that about me, but I, um, I certainly think that one of the reasons maybe why things have gone well in sports for me is that is because I've always really felt like I've had a lot to learn and um, there's always just so much more that I could be doing um, pieces of technique or mindset or, um, you know, a strategy that could be, could be, could make me even better than I am. So, right. um, so I just don't really think of it as a mastery, but I, um, I, I really enjoy the process of, yeah. of what being good at sports takes. <laughs> well, it brings you a certain confidence. And actually it was so funny tonight, you know, thinking about, you know, okay, well, we're, we're going to talk about sports on the show. It's going to be great. And without even thinking it, I have always, I mean, this has been kind of my signature thing because I've always done sports where girls were not always like, you know, the, the dominant sex in there. Um, I was like one of the first female hockey players in St. Louis. Um, I actually was kind of forced the co-ed on the guys, unfortunately. 
Um, they didn't, there were lots of places that they didn't want us girls along. And I was kind of, I wanted to play and that's all I knew. So in that I kind of adopted, and I'm talking going back into the eighties, I adopted pink as my signature color. And <laughs> so, because to me, I thought it's really a, truly a strength for women that we're able to be very strong. We can compete, we can go toe to toe. We can be just as great athletes as men can be, but at the same time, we can be still feminine and we can still be the true woman that we are. So without even thinking subconsciously, I just picked out a couple of shirts out of the closet and the first thing I picked was pink. I so, love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually we have that in common. When I was little, I was doing everything, anything and everything having to do with sports. And I played on a boys ice hockey team as well. So I remember, I remember, um, I remember that. And I just, I, for whatever reason, not being intimidated at all. And mm -hmm. as I wouldn't think that you would be, um, because there's a confidence um, about you that you have for sure um, that I've noticed over the years yeah. of knowing you. And that's something that, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's something that, clearly comes from a lot of different places, but I think it maybe is partly because of experiences like that, you know, being yeah. thrown into playing with the boys and here, this is what you, you want to play this sport. Okay. And right. let's do it. And Hey, yeah. we're all having fun and why can't I do this? And so, you know, learning that from a very early age and sometimes in what I do, I have to, um, I have to undo some of the, past experiences that's telling someone I can't, or I'm yeah. not able to, or I'm not strong enough, or um, I'm not tough enough, um, or maybe they just think I'm not, um, you know, I'm not good, at, I'm not good right. at sports, right. and right. So developed, you know, mental scripts. And so I think you had a great advantage there just being thrown into that when you are young, so that yeah. you actually develop confidence from from those experiences? Well, I was actually kind of a late bloomer. Um, I didn't strap skates on my feet until I was 16. And it was actually a mistake. Um, I, enough, though. It was it, a very impressionable time. I mean, your teenage years, a lot of things can happen. And, and I remember I signed up for a learn to skate hockey program. And I thought that meant learn to skate with hockey skates on. I had no idea that was, you know, you're actually going to learn to skate and you're going to learn how to play hockey. And they had given us a flyer with a date that said, pick up your equipment on this date. And I went, what, wait a minute, what did I sign up for? And I just, after I got all the equipment and started playing, it, it was a love affair that had started. And, and I think you're right. Having no preconceived notion of how girls should compete um, really did help me. But one thing, and, and it's always kind of bugged me, Chelsea, maybe this is kind of, we'll piggyback into a, along with what you're doing with your, you know, your mindset uh, coach program here is I always found that if I had a slight injury, and I'm talking about, you know, a massive, like a fracture or anything like that, but, you know, just my pulled muscle or, you know, twisted ankle or that kind of stuff, I always seem to play a better game. Yeah. When, when I, when I, something like that happened, can you talk I about gonna, I was just going to say you probably played better. Oh, I did. Yeah. Totally did. I was, and the coaches would always talk to me after the game and they'd say, I don't know what got into you, but keep hurting yourself. So yeah. it was kind of like, yeah. So, so maybe you can talk about that because it is mindset. Is it not? It is. Um, so I would say that's coming from expectations or lack thereof. Um, so I always tell my, uh, my athletes look the best possible mindset you can go into a competition with is that you have no expectations so whatever it is that gets you into that mindset um while still maybe having a, a goal out there of what you want to accomplish but but going in just with that freedom of um of you know you're free to fail um, so I think that you kind of gave yourself in that moment, you were in, you know, that slight nagging injury, you're giving yourself like a, like a, like a get out of jail free card. It's okay. If I fall, it's okay. If I mess up, it's okay. If I don't play that well today. And so when you say that to yourself, it's, and in your case, it's probably more subconscious. And in many athletes case, it's subconscious that's when you give yourself the freedom to perform your best. And so actually, 
it's funny because I know this. And so I know that I'm going to perform my best when I go into a competition with no expectations. Mm -hmm. So finding a way to not have expectations is um, it's, it's difficult. Um, and, and one thing that I've noticed, um, some of the best, the best water skier in the world that I can think of. It's very funny. He, he's the best actually of all time. He's, wow. he's not just the best right now. He's the best yeah. that has ever been. And it's funny because whenever he's practicing, he is complaining about everything. I mean, not, not about the boat and not about, not about the, uh, not about like factors such as like wind or variable weather variables or anything like that. I'm not right. complaining about that, but he has some kind of excuse like, Oh, I just did a photo shoot yesterday. I skied for two hours. So we'll see how this goes. So it's kind of giving him the get out of jail free card or like, Oh, my hands are hurting. I have a blister. So it's like yep. not a major thing, but it's a it's enough where you're giving yourself that that freedom. Um, so I think I think that's huge to be able to do that. There's other ways of getting there. I think that um, having a support system in in your coach and in your team or teammates or the people that are kind of supporting you and whatever that you're doing and and acknowledging fear and saying like hey I'm nervous or I'm a little yeah. bit I'm a little bit uh scared here and knowing and and them actually saying to you that's okay like we're still going yeah. to go out to dinner later you know the world's going to continue to move on we're going to come to practice tomorrow whether you do well or you don't do well, and likely you're going to be more motivated if you don't do well, actually. Um, and yeah. so, you know, there's 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 learning and there's winning, and usually they don't occur at the same time. But <laughs> you know, that's that's really I, I think you're hitting on something that's so true, and it's not right. talked about, and people yeah. wonder why, and they they call it like getting in the zone. Yep. Um, and like you were in the zone those days, but in reality, you gave yourself that freedom to fail and you just said, screw it. I'm just going to go out there and see what and happens. that's what you need. You need to have that. All right. I'm just going to lay it all out there and see what happens. Yeah. It's very much a see what happens you know, mentality. And I think uh, some of this, odd, this is a couple of things is weird because my life kind of converges, you know, cause I see a lot, I was you know, going through high school and college and everything. And it was always sport and music. Like those two were like, every, like that was my entire life. And it still is to this day. And I also found that when I hit the mindset and maybe just because I hit middle age, that you just don't care as much. <laughs> when she, <laughs> once a woman hits, you know, middle age, she kind of goes, ah, it doesn't matter anymore. That I found a lot more enjoyment of things. And I actually, um, for many years would have stage fright before I would get, get on stage and perform, which I know that's impossible for you to believe, but I, I would be, I would have that. And it got to a point where I just hit that middle age stage. And I just said, you know what? These people paid to see me do what I do and I'm going to give them a show and I'm just going to have a good time doing it. And once I did that, I, I can say I have zero stage fright at this point in my life. And so that just piggybacks, piggybacks exactly what you just said for sport. Yeah, that's probably not something most uh, performers can say. I have no stage fright. That's that's probably not something most people experience. Um, potentially, some never experience, and yeah. um, and there is a there is a there is a joy in that that is is being missed, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's it's so freeing to be able to do what you do, do what you do, and do what you love, and not feel like you have to, or you yeah. got to, or you, um, you know, you're putting, putting that pressure on it. Um, so there is, there's a lot of parallels there to sports. Yeah. Um, the, the, pr the pressure and the butterflies that you feel or that you used to feel before yeah. you went on stage were, you know, are likely exactly the same feelings that I feel or have felt in the past. Yeah 
before I go out on the water in a tournament or, right. um, you know, or, or play a tennis match or whatever the case may be there. The, the actual physical response of the body and the feelings that we feel, even though you're in a, you're in a, you're going to perform and sing right. and I'm going to do something athletic. The actual yeah. feelings are exactly the same. Yeah, and so are. that's one of the key selling points to um, doing mindset training because yeah. uh, there is such parallels to every aspect of life, whether you are going to be an actor or get on stage, or if you're going to, be at work down the road, having to give a presentation yeah. in front of a whole bunch of people. Pressure exists in different ways in different people's lives, but pressure exists in almost everyone's life in one way or another. So right. learning how to deal with that, ideally at a younger age, um, is very important. And I think that the, the difference in our company is that we draw the connections. So right. we right. actually talk about, okay, how does this scenario actually apply to school? You know, right. how right. can you use how can you use what you've learned here and use it for your test this week? How can you use it for your exams? How can you use it in your relationships? Um, how can you use it in, how could you see yourself using this and work down the road? And so those connections are drawn so that you're not having to learn life lessons over and over and over again, but just in different avenues. Um, that, that was something that I even had to learn over again from the tennis world to the ski world. Like there was some things that I drew connections on, but off, it was crazy how, I would actually get to start, I started competing in water skiing and I wasn't doing the things that were successful in tennis in skiing. Um, it was it was like I had to learn how to be mentally tough, how to relax under pressure, how to um, have confidence and all those things. I had to learn them all over again because I didn't learn them to my very core. I only learned them like on a very surface tennis level and it wasn't like deep within my character. Does that make sense? It totally does actually. Now, now that I'm thinking of it, you know, that, that I have, that, that if I look at myself playing a sport, you know, um, going from one to the other, like I find myself hitting, hitting thresholds. And, you know, like I can't go beyond whatever, like give me a certain level of something like I can't like I like going out and cycling. I can only go, you know, 20 mm -hmm. miles like I can't do a 30 mile or a 35 mile bike ride. There's no way. And yet what was odd was like I had a few years back. Um, I've had my issues with breaking feet and stuff like that. But <laughs> in between breaking feet, um, I actually took a trip up to Philadelphia to do um, a 33 mile bike ride. So 50 K and, um, and I remember on that trip, I had hit that 20 mile wall and I was just about to die. And if you can imagine it, I can't remember what month of the year it was, but I remember it was hot and the pavement, the heat from the pavement was coming up and it was just miserable. And a lot of the fellow cyclists, they were just wilting because of the heat. But I was like, I've, I've trained for this because being in the Carolinas, you know, humidity yep. and heat. <laughs> go hand in hand. I got this. And that wasn't my issue. My issue was my mental game. I was, I was so like, I knew that I had, I, I felt it in my bones. I knew I had hit that 20 mile mark. And I was like, I, I can't, I, I got to, I've signed up for this. I drove, you know, eight, eight or 10 hours up to Philadelphia to do this. And I was not going to go home without my bling. Like I was going to say that I had completed it. I got my ribbon and things were great. But it was on the surface. Like I, you know, like when you're talking about that, that it's certain elements, I understood, you know, things, but I hit that wall and where I might be on stage or something else doing what I do. And I may be exhausted or I can't hit that certain note. I'm going to push through. I know how to do it. I can get it done. And that particular day I wound up and it was the only motivation was I remember somebody had stopped at one of the rest stops and said, Hey, where are you from? And I said, you know, from North Carolina. 
And they were like, oh, well, you got this. You're getting close. You know, there's only like 10 more miles to go. You got this. And I said, and I remember saying, I didn't drive all this way to go home and fail. Like, yep. I, I, I'm going to push through this and I'm going to complete it. And I may have been one of the last few cyclists to cross that finish line, but by God, I did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you ultimately did find what was going to push you through there for yeah. sure. Um, but like you said, potentially it could have gone the other way. Um, yeah. had you not, had you not thought the right things in the moment, yeah. um, had you not had that thought, you know, no, I'm going to do this. And you yeah. were, you were very positive in that. Um, so, you know, some, it was funny. I actually, uh, met someone today, something you said made me think of this. Mm. Uh, I met someone today who was talking about tennis and he's, he was asking me if I'm still playing competitively. Um, and then I asked him if he was, and he said, no, you know, kind of once I hit a certain level, um, in sports and I realized that I'm, I'm not getting any better. I usually go find something else to do. And, oh my God. and I just thought, you know, like he said, he he said that he just would start to go, kind of go down the hill, you know, yeah, so you're going yeah. up the hill, and then you kind of go down, and then right, and and that happens, right, as athletes, yeah. um, and so, and I just, I just, you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't in a mindset session with the guys, so I wasn't about to go into my spiel, but I, <laughs> but in my mind, I was sort of thinking, wow, you might run out of sports. <laughs> You know, eventually there'll be a point. There'll be no more. Sorry. <laughs> you know, because that's such a um, mental blocks, and and the there are going to be peaks and valleys. You know, um, yeah. in training, and um, I'm I just read a book called Mastery. It's funny that you brought that up, but it's it's all about enjoying the plateau, um, hmm. and and there's just this there's this piece of of competing and and training hard especially kind of when you get to those higher levels where you just feel for quite a good amount of time like you said in the beginning of the program mm -hmm. there's this like feeling like I'm not getting any better I'm hitting a wall and hitting a wall and right. hitting a wall and that's usually where motivation starts to go down um maybe training starts to get less intense Maybe our attention shifts to something else, especially if we're adults right. and we're not making right. money at this, right? Mm -hmm. right, um, right? But in reality, the real learning and the real development as an athlete comes in the plateau. It, wow. It, it truly comes in the plateau. plateau. So if you know that, um, then it makes it easier to push through. But if you don't know that <laughs> yeah. and you just think I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck because you're applying that mental script of I'm stuck. <laughs> now you are stuck because you're not realizing the most learning comes in the plateau. You know, it, it's interesting. I actually, I have an undergraduate degree in sociology and, mm -hmm. you know, they talk about self-fulfilling prophecies is, you know, that, that there are groups of people, you know, obviously sociology is groups of people, but there will, there'll be folks that you'll talk to and they will say, you know, like, I am never going to be a gifted athlete. And yeah, yeah. I've heard that a million times. Yeah. And so of course that's, you're gonna, you're, you're never going to be one. And, you know, it's, it's when, you, you know, like, I think I, I'm just, I'm picking up a central thread of this is just enjoy, enjoy that experience as you get improved and 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 even though we're talking plateaus and stuff we absolutely hate that you're saying that's a great learning experience right yeah. there and there to get you to the next level yeah i can't so, tell you how many times i've heard that oh i'm never going to be you chels i'm never going to yeah. be do what you do i'm never going to be that and um and i'm like well i you said that not me i you know um and and yeah. what and maybe you need some people around you that are actually going to be the support system and tell you what you really could be. Right. But I think there is also a, um, there's a preconceived notion or, or a misconception in the athletic world by the fans mm -hmm. in all sports, in yeah. all sports that, well, they got there because they're extremely talented. Yeah. 
And, and I'm here to tell you that talent almost doesn't exist. I'm not wow. saying it doesn't exist because there's body mechanics and there's there's builds for different sports. Certainly, if you're seven feet tall, are you going to be better for basketball than you are for um, gymnastics? Right. 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 But at the same time, you know, true talent. I, I've, I've had so many people tell me that I'm talented and I mm -hmm. then show them photos and videos of when I was horrible. And I, and I, I'm like, well, look at this. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me what you think, because that's, that's not talent. No, you know, you work hard at this. I mean, both, right. both of your sports. I mean, I, you're, you're constantly yeah. on the go and constantly improving your game. You yeah. know, and, I, and I can't remember who it was that said it. And I think it was Kobe Bryant was the athlete. It was a fellow basketball player had said that they had, you know, met up against his team several times. And so they'd go out and do their warmups. And the one guy, you know, he went out, he stayed later than the whole team and he kept, you know, shooting free throws and kept trying to improve. And so he would go on like 15 minutes and he finally said, okay, I'm going to sit on the bench. He couldn't keep it going. Like he kept trying yeah. to extend that warm up. And every time he would meet up against this team that Kobe Bryant played on, he would try to extend that free throw warm up. And it got longer and longer and longer. And finally, it wound up being like a half hour the guy was playing. So then he wound up sitting down he, and he was like, I'm just, I'm just going to see how long does Kobe keep doing free throws. And he wound up, Kobe always did at least a half hour. Yeah. And so he finally talked to the guy and he said, OK, I got to know. So, you know, what is this that you're always doing, you know, free throws, your extra warm up for that long after, you know, before the game and everything? What's the deal? And he said, I just wanted to see how long you were going to last. Ah, I love it. <laughs> it was, he said, I'm always going to keep my thing is I'm going to keep working on my game. And, you know, I, I was just kind of curious how long you're going to keep trying to do that. The same. Yeah. Yeah. So the work, I mean, the work ethic is, is greater than what people want to put in. Right. Um, it's, it's greater than what they think they're able to put in. So it's kind of that 20 mile hour, 20 mile marker on your bike ride. And yeah. And, and the ability to push through, how are you going to push through? What are the scripts you're going to tell yourself um, in those, in those moments, having, having the right, you know, goals um, and understanding that failure and plateaus are all part of the process. Um, and, you know, just remind yourself of, of things like Michael Jordan didn't make his high school basketball team. That is amazing. It didn't make it. Um, wow. got cut and wow. he worked his butt off and, you know, then got it, got, uh, made it the next year. But yeah. He didn't yeah. make it the first year. So, so there's a lot of failure in, um, in success. Right. And there's a lot of hard work and success, but, but mindset is a piece that I think people are missing. They, they have a plan for technique. They have a plan for strategy, a plan for fitness. Um, but they don't really have a plan for the mental game. So, so what I do is I go through, um, eight, eight, what I call mental muscles. So if you think about men mental training, like, like it's strength training, mm -hmm. we go through, um, several weeks on each of, uh, the mental muscles. And so what they are, are self-knowledge or self-awareness. So you have to become a super self-aware athlete. Um, of awareness of your body, awareness of your emotions, awareness of detrimental thoughts. Um, all of those things are incorporated in self-awareness. Um, and then also figuring out how to change those and get to a um, positive mental script, positive go-to affirmations, um, knowing adversity situations and what you're going to plan on doing and having a plan for that mm -hmm. off of or outside of the sport while you're kind of chalk talking, having a plan. And then we go through goal setting, um, both process and result oriented goals, um, mental toughness. So several weeks on mental toughness, um, several weeks on motivation. And then we go to re relaxing under pressure, confidence, clarity, and aggressiveness. 
And then we have a section on injury recovery if that's applicable. But um, so we kind of break it down into those eight components. And then do we, we do several weeks on each of those. And so you're guided through that with a coach like me. Um, although I am one of several coaches um, uh, that work for Winning Mindset. There's actually 80 of us. Right. And so around the whole country. So we're kind of dispersed all over the place. And um, so we work with people on these different components and we kind of dig it out of you so that it, it truly comes from the athlete um, yep. instead of you know, us telling you, here's how you do it. Um, it's asking the right questions and understanding what they're going through and how, how we can apply our proven methods to your specific um, circumstances and life stage and all of that. So we work with, you know, kids, I have someone as young as nine, and then all the way through, you know, adult athletes. So, um, so there's no limitation there. And I think, um, I think it's a piece that most athletes are missing, mainly probably because they don't know what to do. Um, yeah. More so than knowing that it's important. I think they usually know it's important, but they don't know how to or what to do. Right. Mindset right. training. Well, I think they think of, okay, well, if I can't get beyond this threshold, like, like if my golf handicap doesn't get below a 15, that if I just keep hitting the, you know, the, you know, the, the, if I keep hitting the links, if I keep, you know, going out and practicing my swing, you know, you know, that eventually it'll get better. And they don't think about the entire picture. Um, and right. interesting that you mentioned that as one of your steps, one of the things that you, that you guys cover is talking about the relaxation of it. Um, mm -hmm when I took voice lessons, one of the things that coach told me was because I'm so high energy all the time that she said, one of the things that's a problem for you is because you're expanding so much energy. What you need to do is take it down a notch. And so like before every performance, I will take like three minutes. And the first time I did it, all of my castmates were like, is everything okay? Cause I was, you know, quiet, yeah. which they're not used to. And, <laughs> And so I literally took my headphones and took some relaxing music and went off and just took myself back into the zone. And so when I hit the stage, I was ready to go. Um, I even did that when I sang at Lincoln Center in New York City, that that yeah. kind of just really because for such a high pressure moment, you know, and hitting some of the highest notes I think I've ever hit in my entire life. I needed to make sure I was in that zone. So there really is a mental game. Yeah, there. I mean, there's no. There's no finding the zone um, without being relaxed. And that is for sure. Um, so how to on that, you yeah. know, I think, I think there's several pieces, but just to maybe give your, your viewers just like a little piece of yeah. what that is, yeah. um, is number one is knowing your numbers. Okay. So when I say that, what I mean is, knowing your intensity level. So as an athlete, you, if you were to rate your intensity on a scale of one to 10, what, at what level would you say you perform your best? Okay. Right. And so right. nine, 99.999% .999 of the time, it's not a 10. So you would right. think like, oh, I need to be the most intense I can possibly be to perform my best. Well, Typically, when that happens, you remove the relaxation piece, which I think is what you were talking yeah. about. So yeah. if I can bring that back down, and like I know for for my water skiing, I want to be at about um, I want to be at about a five. Wow. Um, and then I I can turn it on if I need to, if I need to scrap and. I, I, I've got to do that. I've got to get to the 10 if I have to, but right. I'm certainly not going to start there. You know, yeah. I, I'm going to sit, I'm going to go in at a five on my intensity level. So, so I'm going to make sure that I'm mentally at a five and not at a 10, you yeah. know, I'm not yeah. going in balls to the wall. Yeah. You know, same, you know, yeah. same, the same thing in all sports. So, right. So do I, you know, and if I am too high, do I need to like go into child's pose for a few minutes before 
I go out on the water or do right. I need to like shake out yeah. or do I need to um, throw a ball with a friend? Is there mm -hmm. something that I can do to bring myself down? Right. And then, and then another piece of the being too high, too amped up and, and not being able to relax is, is nerves. And yeah. so it's all, it's all what we call, what we call that. And so change the mental script around what nerves are. So start to think about nerves as that you're excited. And yeah. I, even though, you know, it feels like butterflies, right? Mm -hmm. yep. There's somebody else that feels the exact same th feeling and all they think is I'm excited. And so, right. so we've actually assigned that to ourselves. And so there's a piece of that that we actually need and want. The, and it's, it's why you can actually perform better in competition than in practice if you harness it the right way yeah. because that extra um, focus can be used for, um, for, for positive instead of for negative. So I first yeah. have to see it as that. And typically um, if I don't feel that, if I don't feel nerves, I actually am a little more worried about that because mm -hmm. usually that means that you're overtraining, you really are putting too much into this and you need a break and you, you're actually yeah. competing too much and you don't actually have, you don't care enough yeah. <laughs> ultimately. And so um, a little bit of nerves is a good thing. So start seeing it that way. Yeah. Find your levels and find, find a way to get yourself to your intensity levels. Wow. You know, like, like I was thinking about when I was figure skating and I always psyched myself out before competitions. Always. I, I could mm -hmm. just nail every single thing in practice with my coach, everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that it got down to the, the actual day of the competition and I couldn't, I tripped over my own skates. I mean, it's that kind of <laughs> it's yeah. just terrible. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it can happen. And, and, and that's, you know, that could have been so many different things, you know, um, it, it was, it was likely, you know, just not wanting to let down other people. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot of that, but, there, but I think, I think that a lot of times athletes think like it's one thing, right? Like they go yeah. see a sports psychologist and they're like, I'm too nervous. Sports psychologist says, you know, Oh, you should just, address this with your coach and you should talk about them, talk about, you know, your nerves and you should figure out like how you can be okay with that. And, right. and you should, you know, change this or that. Well, approaching it from like that perspective of like, I have something wrong with me yeah. and yeah. therefore can you fix me? Yeah. Um, that's like not really the most helpful way of doing it. So what I love about what we do is it's just so much more holistic. It's like, yeah. first of all, nothing's wrong with you. The fact that you're going out there and feeling pressure and like falling over your skates, absolutely nothing is wrong with you. This is like beyond normal. Everyone mm -hmm. feels this way. Mm -hmm. And and, and if, they don't, if they're not feeling that way, then, you know, they're right. they're thinking it if it's if they're not if it's not being shown they're at least thinking it and it could show up at any time so approaching it from like all right how can we change all of these different components how can we get super clear on your technique let's write it down right. how can we um how can we make your practices way more like competition how can we incorporate some aggressive thoughts what yeah. could we do to um, change your process goals so that the result goal is not so far in the front of your mind? Um, yeah. How can we reduce pressure in the competition, but increase pressure in practice? So yeah. how can we like approach this from all of these, you know, eight different angles instead yeah. of just saying, Oh, well, just take a couple deep breaths, visualize your breath, best performance. Yeah. Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with deep breathing and visualization. There, there are things that we use, but but they're that's 10%, you know, right. 
Right. It's, it's just it's a part of the entire it's equation a piece of the puzzle, not not a one time one fix thing. Yeah. And it's interesting thinking about one of the competitions that I did, and I remember this, and I remember every time I'd step out on the ice, and I never had an issue with hockey. Uh, it just was because, because the aggressive part of it, because you get yeah. out there and you, you play. Because if you're you not aggressive, out. everyone else is going to run you over. Exactly. As the only girl in the entire league, you work already a marked target at that point. Yeah. But thinking about the figure skating has to be so, everything was done so precisely. Now they've changed the rules of figure skating. The school figures have gone away from it and different things of elements of that competition have changed. But it used to be such a precise art. You know, like you literally had to trace school figures in the ice and the closer that you got to that figure eight, you know, precisely every single time meant the higher score. It wasn't necessarily your technique with your arms and you know, how far you leaned or anything like that, but it was tracing a perfect, you know, uh, diagram on the ice. But I remember when we got to the actual competition itself, you know, the actual skating and short programs and things of that sort, that the entire program was so mapped that if you took an extra step in there, they knew there was something wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what kind of choked me was the knowledge of, I have to be this precise. And if I, you know, if I double foot this landing or I take an extra step before I get in to prepare for my jump, that it's like, everything is going to be, the whole world's going to end. Mm -hmm. And that's a heck of a lot of pressure just to put on yourself just for something you paid to go do. <laughs> yeah, fun. no, yeah, for sure. I mean, and I come from a sport where if you fall um, uh, in the first 10 seconds that you're up, you're done. So you, it's not even like you made a mistake, you can get back up and keep going, you're actually finished. And at, a, at, at some pro events and at nationals and things like that, um, it's one round. So it's not even like you can get a second chance Actually, worlds um, in uh, in Malaysia, you know, it's one round, and so wow. um, you fall, you're done. And yes, having that information and having that knowledge of like, wow, if I make one mistake, like you said, I make one mistake, I'm done. Yeah. Um, you know, I I usually in order to help with that, what helps me is I go through real quick, not, I don't spend a lot of time on it, but I think it's a, an important piece is I go through worst case scenario real fast. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, okay, yep. You go all this way, you travel all this way, you put in all these hours, mm -hmm. you fall. Um, yeah. Okay, so that let's say that happens. How are you gonna feel? What are you gonna do? What's tomorrow gonna look like? And then I start to realize like, you know what, I'm probably not going to change a single thing. Yeah. You know, I'm really going to yeah. do all the same things. So yeah. that I, I really like the going through worst case scenario yeah. um, piece of that just quickly, right. not, not spending a lot of time on it, but just, you know, yeah. It puts it, it puts it in perspective for it. And, you know, um, that reminds me of, I, you know, I used to compete in dog sports and thinking about Rebel that, and we went to the first Samoyed National Specialty and with no preconceived notions of anything. And so mm -hmm. we entered in a few events and um, and I remember there were people there that did, you know, confirmation, you know, the pretty dog show stuff. And of course, Rebel was a rescue. So we didn't do any of that stuff. We did performance events. So it was sheep herding, you know, it was weight pull. It was all kinds of great stuff. Yeah. And, and I remember, I'll never forget this. I don't even know who the woman was, but she was so miffed at me. And a few people had gathered around because Rebel was such an unusual coat that they all had to see this, this child, you know, this biscuit coat. And, and I remember talking about what we had done for the week and outside, you know, mind you, right next to us were all these dogs running in a ring and they were doing, you know, getting ready for the, the best in the entire show. So there was going to be the top dog, literally competition was about to take place. And this one that was a professional handler. And she said, Oh, well, you must've been working on this quite some time you know, to get to walk away from a nationals with that much, you know, that many ribbons. And I literally just looked at her and said, Nope, we just showed up and wanted to see what happened. And, yeah. and she literally turned on her heels and walked away. She couldn't handle that. And it was she didn't put a lot in probably. No, and see, that's her whole life because she's structured and this is, you know, her livelihood and that kind of thing. But 
but there was no pressure. And I watch people, even in those sports with their animals, that the, that the dogs would literally shut down because they're shouting at their dogs to do what they had worked on in, in practice for. Like you said, oh, they've worked all, this, all these months to get there or years in, in some cases and the team just fell apart. And so, yeah, that's, you know, and I, and I always kind of put that in the back of my mind that no matter how bad he showed me up, that I would still just kick back, relax and just have a good time because that's what he was all about. <laughs> yeah. And like you would, you would, it might surprise some people that, that that is, um, that is something that we actually talk about. Like it's structured in our program. That's great. Worksheets that we talk about. All right. Why, you know, what is your purpose in life? Why is this not everything? Um, you know, yes, you love the sport and let's right. talk about that. And we have, we have that too, but you know, what else is really important to you? What are your top priorities? in life, even though you're, you know, even if you're like 15 years old, we talk about this. Right. And so, so that's, that's a piece of the, that's another piece of the puzzle, which it shows up as, you know, I can relax more because this really isn't everything for me. My, my life goals are, are not really athletic achievement. It's, you know, what I really want to do is help people or what I really want to do is, you know, save rescue animals or what I right. really want to, I really want my stamp to be, um, you know, my, my God given purpose in life versus, versus just ribbons and trophies and prizes and, and whatever. And, and understanding that that is never like speaking from where I sit, you know, yeah. I've, I've won national championships and it's it's like it's literally not fulfilling um wow. I, I wish i could say that it was but it's not all uh, that work and then to say it's not fulfilling no it's not i mean it's 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 like it's awesome and you're you're happy that you achieve a goal but it's not like life life sustaining or life fulfilling um and you really truly have to enjoy the journey that you're on um, and, and take every day as a gift. So, you know, something that we, we talk about mindset principles at winning mindset. One of our mi mindset principles is, um, I am thankful for the opportunity to blank. So whatever that is, right. So you're just thankful to be able to do that thing, you know, whether it's a sport or sing or, or, yeah whatever, anything, your dance or yeah. um, cook, or it could be, it could be anything or show dogs. It could yeah. be anything. Um, but being thankful for being there and, and, and loving the journey, enjoying the journey, um, always trying to be a better version of yourself and, and have that growth mindset. I think that's what yeah. makes it, makes it enjoyable. Can you create long lasting friendships, relationships, along the way that are going to be a heck of a lot more important um, to you down the road when you're 80 years old and <laughs> you want to go play pickleball with somebody. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, yep. That, that's, you're going to, you're going to go to your, your relationships are going to be the most important thing to you um, in your life. Uh, and that's, that's a perspective that that can't be lost. And I think that's part of my job is to make my athletes realize that it's 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 just what you do. It's not who you are. It, it's amazing. It, it's a full. It's really like 360. I mean, you really are putting life in focus. It's more than just sport, um, yeah. but it does bleed over to other areas. You know, and we could sit here and talk all night about this because I, you know, I, there are so many things that I'm my brain's spinning with with things where, you know, like I used to work for American Honda Motor Company and, you know, like we had people that came in, you could tell who had worked on team sports and who had worked, who had not had any sport experience mm -hmm. because it really bled over to how people relate to each other in business. So it, it yeah. really sets up your path for success in life. But Chels, I'm, I heard that there's a vicious rumor around. You can tell me if this is true or not that if people get in touch with you, they can get a free mindset session with you. Is that right? 
Yeah, we're doing a trial session. So it's not a, um, it's not a full like 30, 40 minute session. It's going to be like a 15 minute session that um, is free. And yeah. so it's give you a little bit more information about what we do. I'm certainly willing to talk with you about, um, you know, pertinent information or things you're going through right now. Um, however, I think that I've made the message clear throughout this that, yeah. you know, it's really a process. It's really a dedication to mindset training, just like strength training, just like your technique training. So, um, so under with the understanding that, you know, that is something that is hopefully it's something that you would continue, but I'm certainly willing to, you know, put it out there and, and, and challenge you to, to take me up on that. I'd love to talk to anyone who's interested in hearing more about what that is and some, an avenue that winning mindset is going just because you brought up businesses. We're actually sort of diving into the business world. And um, I was on a podcast the other week with somebody who works with businesses. So that's, um, that's an avenue that we're going at. And, and we're, we also can come and speak at the business. And we think that it's actually, um, it's really going to be impactful because so many people did play sports, yeah. you know, growing up and now they're in the business world and, and they love to talk about this stuff, right. And, and yeah. see how it could possibly apply to their job or, um, performance or teams yeah. in, in the workplace. So we would, um, we have a whole outside of the whole individual package, we work with teams. So that's kind of right. how we can work with your company. And so there's lots of different avenues to go with this, but um, get in touch with me. Um, and I definitely would love to talk to anyone who'd like to hear more. That is wonderful. And and for the viewers that are watching tonight, um, at the end of the show, for the last couple of minutes, I put up a slide that has all of Chelsea's contact information, um, you know, over at the uh, Winning Mindset uh, program. And really check her out. I mean, she, this girl, you are on your A game. Can I say that? Even though we are <laughs> talking sports here. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. All right, then. All the corniness that I just got, got to put out there. But Chelsea, thank you again so much for coming on the show. I really, truly appreciate it. And it's good to see your smiling face. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much, Kathy. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into The Village Voice. I'm your host, Realtor Kathy Smith. And uh, until next time, be good. We'll, we'll catch you later.